The biggest problem in history is when people accepted falsehood as if it were true, accepted evil as if it were inevitable. It's a very bad attitude. We have to fix this if we want to fix the world. We need to correct um, a mistake, an attitude that is not very helpful. That is not honest, it's not true, and yet it is very, very common for most of history. For most of history, the issue that good people struggled with is good and evil. You got to be good, don't be bad. Do good, don't do bad. Tempted to do bad, don't do it. Opportunity to do something good, do it. And that's how we perceive the world as a balancing act between good and evil. Are you a good guy or are you a bad guy? Are you the villain or are you the hero? It worked to some degree, but as we see this far ahead, in history, we've still got such a long way to go. And the pendulum seems to swing back and forth. We're good for a while, then we're bad for a while, and then we're good for a while, and then we get a little gooder than before, and then we get a little badder than before. It doesn't seem to be progressing in one direction or the other. It doesn't seem to be resolving itself. Maybe, just maybe, good and evil is not the issue. The goal in life is not to be good. It's not good enough. Good and evil are symptoms, not issues. The real issue is true and false. The truth, the lie. That really has been the issue since the beginning of history. What is true and what is false? Now, the difference between truth and falseness, falsehood, versus good and bad. Good and bad are equally valid, equally real. One is good and one is bad. That's a value judgment. But in terms of reality, is goodness any more true than evil? Is evil more true than good? They're both equally real. But if the issue is false versus truth, well, one of them is true, the other one's got to go. True and false are not equal combatants, not equal choices. Because one is and the other is not. One is true, the other is not. So the real question is, why is there falsehood in the world? Where did that come from? There is construction and there is destruction. No need for explanation. But there is true and there is not true? Where did not true come from? Whether you believe God created the world or you believe that evolution created the world, evolution is a true process. It grows, improves, and survives. Where did the not truth come from? Which particles exploded into fake news. Where does falsehood come from? How does it exist? Now, if somebody is bad, you say, why do you do that? Why do you do that? Why? What makes you behave like that? Stop it. 
But the question of true and false is not how can you be, why are you false? It's how can you be? How do we, how do we accept, how do we handle the existence of falsehood? How does fake exist? Certainly, existence began with truth. Where did the false come from? It's a mystery. Kabbalistic teachings try to explain it. When God hides, when God is concealed, then the false can be mistaken for truth. In other words, when the truth is not revealed, what's left is false. So false means the absence of truth. Like the instances where the darkness is simply the absence of light. Like, oh, this is a very dark room. No, it's not a dark room. Turn on the light and it'll be light. The darkness is only the absence of the light. How the light can be absent? Another interesting mystery. If true is true, how could it be absent? How can anybody lose the truth? How can you stray from the truth? Stray into what? Big mystery needs a lot of explaining. Truth doesn't need explaining. The biggest mystery in the world is the fact that people can sin. A human being created by God can spite God and do things ungodly. That is such a mystery. How is that possible? How is that possible? Not why do you do it, why does it exist? How does it exist? God creates everything, it, it should all be godly. It's a godly creation, and yet it's an ungodly being. Whoa, how did that happen? The biggest problem in history is when people accepted falsehood as if it were true. Accepted evil as if it were inevitable. It's a very bad attitude. We have to fix this if we want to fix the world. To assume every human being is sinful. That may be a fact. But that fact needs a lot of explaining. How did that happen? We're all God's creation. Why aren't we all God-like? Oh, we are. We're created in God's image. Well, then, if we're all created in God's image, how is it even possible for a human being to do something ungodly? Let me share this little insight. God tells Abraham, Avraham, to bring his son, Yitzchak, up on an altar as an offering to God. Avraham goes to do God's bidding, the binding of Jake, of Isaac. He comes to the mountain. He builds the altar, puts the wood on the altar, binds his son, Isaac, Yitzchak, puts him on the wood. And then the Torah says, he sent his hand to reach for the knife with which to slaughter his son. He sent his hand. Strange expression, isn't it? Or even he stretched out his hand. Completely unnecessary. He reached for the knife. 
Here's what was going on. Avraham's connection to God was so complete and so essential that anything God wanted, anything God asked, anything that pleased God, his hand automatically reached for it. He was so in tune with God that his body responded to God's want. Here, for the first time in his life, his hand didn't move. His arm did not act. And he was frightened. Am I losing my connection to God? How can this be? So for the first time in his life, he had to tell his arm to reach for the knife. Out of obedience. But it wasn't instinctive. The truth was, God never said to sacrifice Isaac. He said to bring him up on the altar, which he had already done. And that's why his arm, instinctively in tune with God's will, didn't move. Because it was not God's will to slaughter or to sacrifice the son. It was the binding, not the sacrificing. So his body, still being completely in tune with God's will, wouldn't move. In his humility, Abraham thought maybe this is some evil inclination tempting me to disobey God, which of course it wasn't. Now, is it difficult to believe that Avraham was so in sync with God's will that God's will expressed itself automatically, effortlessly, in, in Avraham's body. So, whoa, can anybody be that godly? See, we consider that to be surprising, mysterious, and in need of explanation. How could anyone be that holy? This is where we're making our biggest mistake. If being godly is a surprise, then we're not thinking straight. Anything God creates should be godly. If you have a child, the child should look like you. And if the child does look, look like you, does that need explaining? There any mystery there? Of course he looks like you. You created him. Now, if a child doesn't look like you, you got to have a lot of explaining to do. So what's the mystery? The mystery is, how can a human being created in God's image do something ungodly? How is that possible? And if it is possible, how long will this continue? This is the problem with original sin. Original sin makes it sound like sinning is the natural, expected behavior, default position. We're all sinful. Someone is righteous, someone is holy. Wow, must be a miracle. That is evil thinking. Everything God creates should be godly. So if someone is godly, no further questions. That's true. That makes sense. That's consistent. No mystery here. If we're not mystified by evil, we've gotten too comfortable with evil. If you believe that evil is inevitable, you're worshiping evil. You're turning evil into a very powerful, un, unavoidable force. Not good. Not true. If evil exists, it must be temporary. It must be some tool, some gimmick to get to something else. Evil does not exist for evil. Because it's not true. 
the ungodly is not true it's 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 a it's a an illusion a convincing illusion and it needs a lot of explaining so here's what we should think when we see evil in the world it should shock us every time not only when it's horrific not only when it kills more people than ever before, any ungodly behavior, a lack of modesty, a lack of honesty, a lack of integrity, how could that be? It, it needs to disturb us. How can that be? How long will this go on? Fixing the world, which is our job, means making the true more convincing than the lie until the lie disappears. How we got it backwards for so long, long story. But we got it wrong. We forgot completely about truth and falseness because we were so focused on good and bad. Who's the good guy? I'm the good guy. You're the bad guy. Here we go. Off to war again. It doesn't really make sense that we are born into this world for 80, 90, 100 years so that we could be good and not bad. It doesn't make sense. What's the point? Being bad is not an option to begin with. What We're born so that we could be bad and we shouldn't be. And if we're not bad, then we're some kind of hero. Why? Because you never bothered anybody, you never killed anybody, you never hurt anybody. That makes you a good person, a life worth living. Doesn't add up. If you don't create me, I will never hurt anybody. If you don't create me, I will never sin. If you don't create me, I will never kill, steal, lie, bear false witness. There's got to be something more. So we need to change our values. It's not good versus bad. It's the truth, capital T, versus anything that isn't. We need to set the world on a path of truth. Good will follow. And if we are convinced that the false is true, then evil will follow. What is horrifying, what should be horrifying, about an innocent person being hurt or even murdered, what should horrify us is, how does what is fake get to damage what is true? That cannot be. That's outrageous. It means the world is not where it needs to be. What do we do to bring the truth back? to make the truth convincing, unavoidable, inevitable, to where the false can't exist at all, and then evil disappears. So fighting the battle of good and evil is just fighting the symptoms. Let's get to the core. What do you do when evil which is false, seems to be dominant, seems to be powerful, seems to be unavoidable? The answer is, emphasize the truth. Speak the truth. Act the truth. Do what is true. 
we're not doing enough, and that leaves room for the false. So now is the time when things are getting sorted out, when the good guys are desperate because their end is near, and the, that the bad guys, and the good guys are finally coming to their senses and are confident of the, of the goodness now is the time to get past the symptoms and let's go for the whole package. If we raise a generation of really good children and good people, there's no guarantee that the next generation will be good. The pendulum swings. But if we raise a generation of children who are focused on what is true, the truth the reason for which we were created, the reason for which we exist, the reason that God created the world in the first place, will never go backwards. Once you have the truth, the false is no longer possible. So do you know the truth? The truth? We need to know it. It's the issue. It's the issue at hand. If we want to stop the horrors of evil, we've got to stop the existence of falsehood. Get to know the truth. And then live it. And do it. Start with charity. Charity is always, was always, and will always be the truth. Not that there will always be poor people. There won't. But charity means generosity. You can be generous with money. You can also be generous with your opinions, with your knowledge, with your good influences. So there will always be generosity. The world was created out of generosity. So let's get back to it. Make generosity the norm. Sinning? Total mystery. Not only why would people do that, how could you? How could you? How can false compete with true? It's got to stop. It's the only real solution. And even if there were no problems, truth would still be the truth. And that's what we talk about. That's what we need to talk about. Everything else is a distraction. This issue, that issue, these people, those people, that's not the issue. All people are created by God in God's image. How could they possibly do things ungodly? Let's get people to think that way. Let's get people to focus on what's really important. That's how we fix the world. The only way. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. These ideas, these messages, this approach to life, this approach to Torah, to meaning, and to morals is vital for the world today. And we need to get this message out to the entire world. It is universal. It's essential. It's indispensable. To support this effort, if you want to be a partner in this crime, check out the link and make a donation. It really helps a lot. And thank you in advance.